social attitudes change in the years 1955 to 1975? Here's my five-step guide to your controlled assignment. Okay, so what you need first will be two sides of A4 notes. And those notes are going to look something like this. Okay, it's going to contain all sorts of facts and figures. You're also going to need a plan. What are you going to put in your plan? Well, this is going to be really quite brief. You're going to have an introduction. Okay, in your introduction, you're just going to set out what it is you're going to actually write about. And in this case, you're going to write about things like changing at all attitudes towards young people, changing attitudes towards immigration and the multicultural society, changing attitudes towards women, and also changing attitudes to what we call this liberal or permissive society. And once you've done that, you're just going to highlight, but then in paragraph one, you're going to write about young people. In paragraph two, you're going to write about immigration and the multicultural society. Paragraph three, you'll write about uh, women, and paragraph four, you'll write about a permissive society. And of course, with all good pieces of work like this, you're going to finish up with a conclusion. So, you've got your notes, you've got your plan, but what are you going to include in your actual uh, notes? So, what do you include? Well, you include all sorts of facts and figures, uh, supporting quotes, um, important new laws. So what sorts of things? Well, if you're looking at young people, you might um, have notes about the fact that they had £830 million to spend by 1959. 60% of women's clothes was being sold to girls 15 to 19 years of age. Um, if we look at um, new laws, when we're looking at the permissive society, the death penalty was abolished in 1965. Divorce Reform Act of 1969 made it easier for people to get a divorce. Abortion had been legalised in 1967, and also in 1967, homosexuality had been legalised. There are all sorts of facts and figures. In 1967, the National Front had been set up, which of course is a racist organisation. So all sorts of facts and figures that you're going to include in your answer. Okay, And remember, in those notes... Okay, you can handwrite them or you can word process them, but remember it can only be a minimum of size 12 font. So that's what you include in your notes, but where are you going to get your notes from? Well, of course, you've been filling in this booklet, haven't you? Okay, and that's pretty much got all the information that you need. This is the basis of your answer, but it's not the only thing you can look at. You've also got your fact book, which again, you can read a little bit more carefully, pick out those really important quotes to back up your argument. You can look at the National Archives, okay, uh, and look at the section on Britain in the 60s. Um, a good YouTube clip to look at is Why I Hate the 60s. You can Google classroom clips. The web, if you like, is your oyster, but remember to record all of those sources and say where you've got your information from. So, what's step four in my guide? Well, step four, focus on the question, okay? Keep referring to the question. This is a question about how attitudes change, okay? Did things change for the better? Did they change for the worse? Because they did in some instances. Make it clear. What did change? What didn't change? Make a judgment. Did it change a lot? Did it change a little? Who did it change for? Were all women's lives better? Were they better in every way? What about people that had been immigrants into Britain? Perhaps in some respects their lives got a lot worse. So these are things to consider. Okay? Make a judgment about each topic at the end of the paragraph. And finally, of course, conclusions are really very, very important. You need to make it clear how much do you think attitudes have actually changed? Have they changed just a little bit? Have they changed, changed quite a bit? Have they not really changed at all? Okay? You need to make that clear and you need to back it up with evidence. Make some of the points maybe, re-emphasise points you've made earlier and
and maybe include some killer quotes in that conclusion to back up the point you're making. Remember, the 60s is often seen as a real period of change, but the reality is that for most people, life continued pretty much as normal. So there we have it, my five step guide to this controlled assignment. Any problems, see Mr Stanier.